This is Sana Keys with EUR Web, and we are at the Pan African Film Festival. Tonight, we'll be talking to some stars of the Kemba movie that is being sponsored by BET and the Pan African Film Festival. Check it out. Taking me back to the beginning, before all this happened. I wasn't even allowed to date until I was 18. Come on, Kemba. I don't fit in. By the time I got to Hampton, I couldn't wait to break free. I met Khalif. The world stopped. So beautiful. Hey, Kemba, you should start thinking about picking a major. You should listen to your father, Kemba. I love you, Kemba. I love you, too. It's nothing. Kemba Smith. You are, I would say, a hero. Because not only were you able to go through something so dramatic, but look at you still standing strong. For all those who do not know who you are in your story, please give our audience a snippet. Um, I am a fighter, a survivor, but ultimately I was sentenced as a first-time nonviolent drug offender to 24 and a half years in federal prison at the age of 23. I um, actually was seven months pregnant and gave birth to my son while I was incarcerated. Um, and so uh, the injustice in it, there was a movement to help free me. Um, but once those prison doors open and it took the president of the United States to open those prison doors it was incumbent upon me to continue to speak out for those that I left behind in prison who I felt as if deserved a second chance as well. Wow. So a lot of people when they go through traumatic things they want to shut the door and never think about that again but you on the other hand you turned it into a film that we're actually seeing tonight at the Pan African Film Festival in Los Angeles. Why was it important for you to turn your story into a film? Um, it was important because I think while I was incarcerated, I envisioned um, God showed me that he wanted to use my story as an, as um, to prevent others from going down the same path. But then also once I was released, um, I know that there was a friend of mine who was incarcerated. Her name is Michelle West. And she was the first person that told me that I was going to be released. And when I walked out of those prison doors, I knew that she still had a double life plus 50 year sentence. And she's still currently in prison. Um, her character's in the film and she's been in there for over 30 years. So it's been important for me to continue to share my story in hopes that there'll be a policy change and also to urge President Biden and governors across the country to exercise their right for, for clemency for people that deserve that second chance. See, I, I saw the, the trailer and a lot of us fall in love with people not really realizing who they are later on. And we have to constantly just keep ourselves encouraged. There's so many paths that you could have taken throughout this story. What were some of the things that you even had to tell yourself while you were incarcerated to just keep your faith strong? It was um, the fact that I had um, parents that were loving me unconditional, even in my mistakes and my faults. Um, it was the fact that I had a son who was a baby, um, that I had to still hope and dream that eventually I would be able to come home to raise him. Um, but it was also, again, um, our community and our people and the resilience of our people and the more I read the more I understood the prison industrial complex um, it made me look at the overall bigger picture of injustice that our people have um, endured over you know centuries um, and so I tapped into some of that resilience in knowing that um, I needed to keep the faith that I would come home but I also once coming home wanted to be um, a legacy of holding the torch and trying to promote change within our communities because of my experience. We are with the director, Kelly Colley. How was it filming such a monumental film as Kimba? Oh gosh, this film is exactly why I became a filmmaker. My background's in anthropology from Howard University. I, like my dad was a pastor. I, my whole focus has been on community with a mix of storytelling. So when Kimba came my way and I read her story, it blew my mind because the same thing that happened to her so long before the time I went to college happened to my best friend. 
the same time we were going to college. Her first offense got caught up um, in a misleading situation. She didn't know what was going on and got um, accepted a package for somebody and was caught. The package had um, kilos of cocaine. So that summer I went to Howard and she went to federal prison. And so I know how it feels to lose family to things like this due to mandatory minimum sentencing laws that do not take into consideration the individual. They do not take into consideration the the circumstances in which they were facing and that they never had an offense before. It's just a blanketed law that affects our communities the most. So that is exactly why I had to direct this because I was directing this for Kimba's story to get out, but also directing it for my family that was affected by this as well. That was absolutely beautifully said. Now, for all the people that will be watching this film, what is one thing that you want to resonate? Because as a director, you put your passion into it. You're like, I, I want them to read exactly yeah. what I'm trying to uh, yeah. portray. What do you want them to get from this movie? I want people to want to take action. I want them to put a face to the issue. I want them to be able to connect emotionally to our f fabulous actors. When you see uh, Nesta Cooper, Sadiq Saunderson, June Care, I mean, all of our actors, the pa Sean Patrick, um, Michelle Hurd, I could go on and on, like, fabulous, everybody, the whole cast, and they bring so much heart to it that it's going to, because talking about mandatory minimum sentencing laws, it doesn't sound sexy, right? But you get these actors with their talent and, and, and the story that was written by Christine Swanson. You get that up there and you entertain. But I like to call it Trojan horsing. People come out to see these performances and they end up learning and gathering information for a call to action. And one of those calls to action that we really want to happen is uh, there's a character in the film, uh, Michelle West, who's a real person. Uh, who is still incarcerated today and we are pushing for her clemency so we want President Biden to grant her clemency and we're using this film as a tool as well as the lobbying to free Michelle West because it's time for her to come home Corey.